Hey everybody, it's Timmy Gobbles, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on making 2D swimming in a little platformer. So do a little jump, splash in the water, swim around, and then we can jump out of the water, bloop, and we're back on land. That's the goal today. And so I found this pixel platformer art pack on Kenny, and it's got water and characters and land. So I'm going to use that. Now I'm going to go ahead and start with an empty project and throw in a main scene with a tile map. Import our tile map and it ended up being uh, having a separation of one by one pixel and the texture regions were 18 by 18 pixels. So on that tile map, I'm going to add a couple layers. Uh, the first layer is going to be background stuff, so it's not really going to interact with your character. Uh, the middle layer is going to be the ground layer, so that's what the character can land and interact with. And then the third layer is going to be the foreground, so it's going to be like transparent things. Like uh, if you go behind a building or you, you're in water, the water's going to be on top of you, or that's the goal anyways. Uh, next I need to work on collisions so that the character can stand on the ground and stuff like that. Uh, so if you add a physics layer and then you click on a tile, you can edit the collision of that layer. One of the cool features you can use is this little auto snap grid. So if we set that to the same size as the um, as the tile, we can get a pretty precise hitbox on that tile. Now if you want to add a really quick rectangle, you can hit F and then you can move around those corners how you like. So uh, if you want to add a corner, you just click on a side and if you want to remove one, you just right click on one of those points. And there's a little zoom in thing if you want to do some precise edits. Um, I only did a couple of these because I only need a couple of them for the project. Here we go, speed through that. It does get pretty tedious, but it's way more tedious for things that aren't rectangles. So fortunately I didn't have to do any of that. Now I want to add a custom data layer. This is going to be telling the character when they're on water or not. So I'm just going to name it water and it's going to be a bool. So, you know, things are either water or they aren't water. And now we need to go to the water tiles and make sure that that custom data is set to true. I did it for the waterfall ones, but I think I would want to do things different for those because they have some kind of velocity component. All right, and I need a couple more ground floors or ground tiles to have collisions on them. So let's go ahead and fix those up as well. All right, now just a little bit of a visual edit. I want the background to be darkened and the foreground to have some transparency so that you can see your character behind it. All right, next I need to look at the project settings. So I wanna fix my viewport to 1280 by 720 and I wanna make the canvas stretch so items don't get all janky. Also, I wanna add some input, so like up, down, left, right, jump, uh, just really basic stuff. I don't know, if I ever continue this project, I'll probably make it more fancy, but that's for another video. And I usually use my arrow keys for up, down and stuff. Okay, so then you can use this little layers button to choose what layer you're painting when you're painting your tile map. And so we want to have a ground and then the water tiles, I want to have ground behind it so that it's not just like floating water. Okay, so that looks pretty nice for what I'm trying to do. Looks like I'm missing a tile there. All right, there we go. And that's enough for the world that I'm going to be doing today. And next I'm going to need a player scene to have something to move around. And that's going to inherit from the character body 2D because we're going to be moving it with code, but we don't really need to do physics stuff with it. And so uh, character body 2D needs a collision shape and usually you like putting a sprite on there. So here um, there's that sprite pack from there. It ended up being 24 by 24 pixels. So. Oh, it's looking a little blurry. We'll fix that in a minute. And it has two frames, so we can use that for the walking and the jumping animation. Now, if you go back to the settings, you change that filter to nearest. It's not going to be nearly as blurry because it's not trying to like interpolate the in-between pixels and stuff. It helps clean it up a bit. All right, so we're going to attach a script, give it a class name player so that main can um, we know what we're doing when we're calling the player's functions in it. 
and we'll go ahead and drop one of these onto that main scene. And there we go. Okay, so then I had an idea, and that was that I don't want collision on those background tiles. And so my solution for this was to have two tile sets. One tile set is going to have collision and the other one is not. So on that background tile, I can paint the tile set that um, doesn't have the collisions on it, doesn't have any collision data. And that way the player can fall through it, but it'll still show visually in the back. All right, next, I need references to the tile map and the player. We're gonna be getting data from the tile map and we're gonna be passing that data through some kind of function on the player. Now, one of the tricky things with this is we need to take the player location, convert that to the tile map location, which is a vector 2i, and then ask the tile map what's at that location. And so we can use the local to map function to convert from a world position to a tile map position. And then we can use the get cell tile data. Uh, the two there was for that layer. So my water is going to be in the foreground. So that's layer number two. All right. And so when I tested that, I got 300 errors. So we might want to fix that. And so if you look at my tile map, there's these tiles that don't have any like pixel information. It's run off of that PNG. And so if we hit the three dots here, we can hit the remove outside tiles from texture and that'll clear up that error. All right, cool, no more 300 errors, that's good. Always a little scary to see that much red. Okay, and I'm gonna use a constant for the move speed. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna want some other constants, but I want them to be global. So I could either store that in main, but I think what I'm gonna do is make a little free floating script and that's gonna hold constants. So I can call it with constants and then I can just like ask for these. So I need gravity, air resistance, water resistance. I think later I need ground resistance, like friction or something. All right, and I also need to get my inputs for left, right. And I need to tell my velocity to change based on those inputs. And then using the move and slide function, we can have the character move itself based on what its velocity is. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and throw in what the jump button does. The jump button's gonna make the Y velocity equal to 100, and then it's gonna eat that input so that it doesn't um, keep happening. And when we release it, that's the end of the jump. So it'll go back to zero or something like that. All right, next I need to do something about gravity. So uh, you can use the is on floor function to see whether or not the character's on the floor. And we wanna apply gravity to the character when they are not on the floor. So use that exclamation point to flip that is on floor to the opposite. So I have that print line printing out the tile data. I didn't really know what it looked like. So it seems like it's a reference to something. Now we need to tell that reference what we want. So we're gonna use the get custom data water. Remember we gave that custom data layer a name called water. And so we're gonna to have to ask for that. Another thing is, there isn't always going to be the water tile because we're not always gonna have a third layer. So we need to check if that data exists. And then if it does, it will um, see if it's water. If it doesn't exist, it'll just print false. So here we go, it's kind of working. Uh, another thing I need to do is I need to shift that position down because it's based on the center of the body. We want it based kind of where the feet are. And then always remember for why uh, positive is down and negative is up. Okay, so now I wanna check, or I wanna keep track that the character is in water or not. So I add a bool to player, uh, just called like is in water or something. And we're gonna make a function that transitions based on if we're in water and if the new tile is not water, or if we are not in water and the new tile we're standing on is water. And that function is pretty cheap, so I don't feel bad about calling it every single frame. So we'll just, we'll check that tile data. If it's water, we'll um, call that player function. And if it's not water, then we'll call it for false. So here, we'll go ahead and check it, go in the water, and ooh, it's calling it, calling it, calling it, and printing it out. So something's wrong there. Oh, you know, I'm not changing the value of the in water bool. So, um... If we're in water and we go out of the water, it changes to false. And if we're out of water and we go into water, it changes to true. There we go, it's working. All 
All right, now I've made two functions to consolidate what the gravity does and what the friction does. So we have a handle gravity that just does gravity stuff and we have a handle friction that just does friction stuff. The gravity one is pretty simple. The friction one is based kind of what our player is on. So if they're in, oh wow. Okay, something's wrong with the values there. Yep, it's just flipping off when I move. Um, so I might need to change the values of those constants. Yeah, gravity's fine. And so let's check if it's the handle friction one. Yep, line off the screen, okay. And we'll turn that one off. And yep, okay, so that's the culprit. So let's go ahead and change some of these values. The friction's probably just too high. Um, that might still be too high. Okay, so it's better. It's not flying off the screen, but it is very sluggish. So tone those down a little more. The water resistance is probably a little too high. We'll see. And splat. All right, look at that. It's like going through mud. It's terrible. Okay, so let's fix that too. All right, that's a little too smooth. Put it to four. And there, you can really, there's a real slowdown when you get in the water. It's not like falling in the air. Next, I want something that's going to visually tell you that you've landed in water. So we're going to use a CPU particles. And there it is, just dripping away. We're going to have to change some of the settings on that. We're going to want it to be a one shot with high burst so that all the particles pop out at the same time. And we'll need to give it some velocity and some random angles. And the scale's probably a little too small, make it a little chunky, make it more blue, make it more water-like. That's pretty good. So then we need to tell that to emit when uh, we transition in or out of the water. So right now it's just doing it all the time. We need to throw that into those ifs. All right, do a little jump and sploosh. And then we'll get out, sploosh, looks okay. And next I need something that tells the character sprite what to do based on what they're doing, if that makes enough sense. So if they're moving, we want it to be doing a walk animation. If it's in water, we'll want it to look like the character's swimming. And if um, they're not moving, we kind of just want to sit still. And we're gonna go ahead and throw the sprite in as an export variable. I like doing this because then when I'm coding, um, the code suggestions will kind of remind me of the different things I can do. If you don't do that, then, and you just kind of drag it into the code as like a dollar sign, whatever the name is, uh, it doesn't give you like code suggestions. And there's two big scenarios. There's when our character's in water and when they're not in water. And we also need to check whether or not they're on the floor when they're not in the water. So it gives us a bit of a nested if statement, but I mean, it's not too bad. If you wanted to organize it better, you could like have a handle sprite in water and a handle sprite on land or something, and that would get rid of one of your ifs, but I, you know, I think it's not too bad. All right, cool, we're moving and do a little jump. All right, so there's no real good jump animation. I probably didn't set one up though, so you know, that's part of it. And then we go in the water, bloop. All right, uh, I don't like how the character is looking up to the sky. I kind of want him to look down, I think. So how do I want to do that? Right, so if we set that flip H to true, that's gonna face them up. And go ahead and try that out. And there we go. Hey, that looks a little better. All right, so one thing I don't like is if I move a little bit and I let go, it looks like my character is still walking, even though they should stop. So the problem with that is I have some kind of Boolean check 
if the velocity is equal to zero. And we all know floats don't like being zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this epsilon constant and then if the velocity direction is close to that epsilon constant, then we're gonna go ahead and make that zero. And there we go. All right, here's a little funny bug. Um, at, if I ever swim, my character doesn't correct themselves upright when they land. So to fix that, uh, we can go ahead and change the rotation back to zero when they land on the floor. I think it looked funny if they just kind of shot upright when they got out of the water, but maybe that's the better way to do it. But I think this looks pretty good too. All right, test it. We're gonna jump in the water and then I need to jump out. Loop. And there we go. Not bad, not bad. So that's about it. I hope this tutorial kind of shows off what you can do with the tile map data layers. Uh, obviously, if I'm gonna let like enemies and stuff that have different states based on what they're on, then I might wanna put like a tile map reference into the like characters themselves. Um, but I think this is a quick little easy demonstration of what you can do with it. Well, that's it for today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you like my stuff, you know, comment, all that stuff. And I always appreciate suggestions of what to do because I kind of run out of ideas. And I get stuck on stuff and then I don't have something to show off and it kind of sucks. But other than that, you know, thank you guys for watching and y'all have a good one.